the uh, River Nen going through the middle of Peterborough, and the Bishop of Peter's Palace is about there. Um, the population uh, of the diocese began to expand in the 1970s with London overspill in... And uh, more recently began to expand due to the phenomenal expansion of Cambridge. The Fens themselves have been less affected, although uh, Ely's population will double to 25,000 by 2021. For the last two years, the number of people attending Church of England churches in the diocese has steadily risen, although, of course, it remains a small percentage of the population. Liturgically, the move to worship amongst the people has, as elsewhere, led to the introduction of nave altars, often as here at Yaxley, in front of a chancel screen which continues to be seen by congregations and, quite correctly, of course, as a barrier. It was, of course, precisely for this reason that a nave altar was introduced at Canterbury Cathedral in the early 1930s. It's not well known. What does that mean? Well, for this particular project, uh, the altar is on a new platform in an area cleared of pews. They have got an electronic organ here, and I'm not going to talk about electronic versus pipe organs. It's too late in the day. Um, uh, amplification, uh, you can see the little speaker down there, but there are actually from the uh, aisle roofs, um, which of course is also to do with a band, an electric band, electric guitars and things. Um, there is a drop-down screen, which is there, not drop-down at the moment, uh, which is attached to Temple Moore's gallery. This is a medieval uh, screen, but this is all Temple Moore. But there's some very good furniture by him in the chancel. The chancel, as you can see, is quite unaffected by all this. Uh, the pulpit here uh, has, has remained. Unfortunately, its base is sort of buried in the platform, but it's, it's perfectly safe. Um, it hasn't been chopped off or anything like that. Uh, and the pulpit is used. Uh, this is fairly rare, I think, nowadays. Um, many priests uh, uh, want to just stand uh, and deliver uh, in the, from, their, from their pulpit, from, their, from the platform. Um, in terms of screens and projectors, these are quite, uh, quite an, become quite an issue. Um, Holy Trinity don't have a screen to which they can attach, a, a fixed screen that they can a, attach a screen to. Um, and uh, the way the church works, two screens uh, for me. So you do get these rather large uh, screens put up. And of course, the projectors, which here, are on their own stands, but in other places the projectors are attached to uh, the arcades. Holy Trinity, uh, is, many of you know, is bang in the middle of Cambridge and is uh, usually closed uh, because of all this equipment um, that's all around and the security risk of it, uh, uh, of it being left there. Uh, given the number of buskers in Cambridge, I think that's probably quite right. <laughs> We've uh, tried to get parishes to uh, install retractable screens and in places where it wouldn't matter, uh, where they can, won't be visually effective. Uh, and of course this, this is what uh, was agreed at Alton, so that's, that's where the screen is. But unfortunately they find it a bit of an imposition to keep opening and closing them, so they tend to remain uh, open. Um, what you can also see here at Alton is the, is the amplification system, uh, some of the speakers here. Amplification uh, is um, quite a, uh, quite a uh, common application to us. Um, you would have thought that having brought the priest down from the chancel into the body of the church, it would be easy enough, but um, 
and uh, with the loop system perhaps, but um, there we are. Uh, and the most, uh, we try to make sure those speakers are in, as, in places that are as in, uh, inconspicuous as possible and not attached to the peers. Um, this is uh, Roy's church near Huntingdon. Um, a church stripped of its plaster by Inskit Lads, fellow of the Antiquaries, uh, in the 1920s. A little bit late, but um, William Morris took a bit of a while to get into the fens, I think. Um, here, at, here at War Boys, uh, these are the screens. There's the screen there and there, sort of creating a, an architectural feature that doesn't exist. Um, and then these, these are the speakers at the moment. Uh, they are about to be moved, moved up. A new system is going and will be hung from the, our roof. These are the projectors, of course. Now, what War Boys has uh, is a, uh, a local band. You can just see it there. And in, uh, to accommodate them, the, this area of the east end of the South Isle, has, the platform has been extended and that's where the band equipment is, is, is kept. Um, the, uh, as you can see, the, the, of course, the uh, pews have been removed and they are now uh, uh, stacking chairs um, and flexible space. There's the, there's the little children's area over there. Uh, but of course, the problem with uh, creating flexible spaces is you've got to do something with the chairs when you take them away. You end up with this sort of thing. Um, uh, obviously, that only, uh, only occurs when the space is cleared. Um, there's, and there's the projectors which are held onto the, uh, the uh, columns by sort of bands placed around, around the top and up there. All, all obviously, uh, uh, eminently removable. The... Uh, we, this is a St. Bennett's in Cambridge. More, you probably know it for its Saxon Tower rather than more than uh, rather than the interior. Uh, we uh, uh, recommended that the speakers were placed uh, up in the aisles, but uh, the uh, Chancellor ruled against us, and uh, so these speakers are now hung onto the uh, uh, pillars. Notice particularly this one, which is next to the pulpit. Um, from which the uh, incumbent insisted uh, she needed uh, to have. The conservative uh, approach to, um, to going to the toilet inside a church, along with the need in as much nave seating as possible, led to a few extensions being built in the diocese in the late 20th century places like Willingham or Impington, Melbourne. Their expense and opposition from some local authority planners, but also the parish church itself, a social, the wider community, has now encouraged parishes to concentrate their social facilities within the church. Quite a bit about that. The initial creation of tea-making facilities is often rather makeshift, as you can see here at Tilbrook, uh, the, where some of the pews at the back have been removed and sort of planks are put across it to make a table and things like that. Uh, and at All Saints Huntingdon, where unfortunately comp chairs and coffee tables have started to come in. Um, uh, but their inadequacy, of course, quickly leads to a discussion of, of permanent installations. The base of the tower, or that chapel, are often the first port of call for such, uh, fee, uh, for such extra facilities. Uh, and as ever, uh, money drives the appearance of these projects. And there are, I have to say, some sad examples to be seen around the diocese. Um, I can't say I particularly like the design of either of these tower infills, but they are well built. Uh, and have left the arch clearly visible, which is perhaps the most important point architecturally. But of course, design expectations are often not high. Patrons of these schemes are not the Oxbridge-educated priest or local squire of old, but a democratically elected PCC. 
And in most of them, hardly anyone has any experience of furnishing an historic building, and certainly not one on this sort of scale. Uh, essentially, people's experience is of domestic interiors, and that is the sort of thing they're looking to apply inside churches. The most common uh, initial approach, anyway, is to create the, uh, the, the, a tea cupboard. Uh, a kitchen and a storage area, as here, housing field at the uh, back end of the uh, of one aisle, um, where uh, at least uh, in this case, at least there are enough storage has been considered uh, in the first place as part of the need to make a, uh, a decent enough area, which is usually kept as good as this. Other places aren't quite so uh, organised. Um, usually because they just haven't understood what they need to have for their, uh, uh, for making, making tea and uh, different occasions for which uh, this facility is going to be used. Uh, this was a nice game when it started um, in that uh, that is the lid that folds down onto this cupboard. So that's all you would have seen. Unfortunately, they bought a new urn. <laughs> And, and so to screen the rest of the church, someone kindly donated one of these uh, halo boards from uh, sort of pin boards that came from, the, uh, came from somewhere. And of course, needless to say, it's attracted notices. So on the other side, and, and this is all the stuff that is, is needed, which is, uh, which is where the sort of well-intentioned things start to, start to fall, fall by the wayside. And what's been said earlier on about sort of management uh, of these facilities is, is so important. The other uh, and, and more sort of larger sort of unit, perhaps, uh, is the concept of the pod. Uh, the pods of uh, sort of first pine, perhaps at uh, All Saints Hereford, uh, these glass pods that were done there, um, and, have been, and come up in many other places. Autumn Waterville uh, is uh, one of about half a dozen autumns on, uh, to the west of Peterborough. Uh, it was a little, a very small um, rural church, but is now entirely surrounded by 1970s housing. Um, it has got a west tower, but it's just got a door, which unfortunately was, is just too small for wheelchair access, so in, in all all, all intents and purposes, the base of the tower was ruled out here, and there's no chapels. Uh, this was the uh, uh, this is what they had: a tea table here, uh, the curtained-off vestry behind there, a font surrounded by stuff, um, and a motley collection of chairs. They embarked on creating a pod at the southwest corner, replacing that vestry. So the pod now uh, opens up to be a servery. Uh, there, which uh, there's more storage in this piece of furniture, which moves back against there when it's not in use. The uh, door at the back leads you through in town here. There's all the electrics are all in that cupboard, and then both lined with these cupboards that incorporate the heating units as well for storage for all the various functions and the things that they want to uh, pursue. Uh, lighting, there was a, a track system that was put in, which um, uh, I think works quite well, but I know some people uh, don't like it. Of course, these are all very, as I say, rather domestic uh, sort of things. Um, and the pod originally wasn't going to come through the arcade, and that was the drawing we approved. During construction, it grew... Um, and, of course, uh, the idea that you might go back to the parish, who are obviously extremely proud of their, their pod, and ask them to shave a foot off it, um, isn't going to happen, but, uh, which, is, which is a pity. But uh, otherwise, that's quite a successful scheme in a church, say, which has no subsidiary spaces. Uh, an even smaller church uh, is Sutton at Peterborough, uh, village, I don't know, it might have two, two, 200 people in it perhaps. Uh, no community building at all, no pub, no nothing, no shop. Uh, and the church, as you can see here, it's a, a, a 
small nave with uh, just a two-bay aisle uh, south aisle there. So uh, it got no, hasn't got a tower, but the western bay has now been filled with uh, a toilet and a servery, and then uh, the space, uh, the nave space has been cleared of, of the pews, and where the pew platforms were, tiles put in which are just like the original tiles which were original, which went up the centre. So even a very small church, um, a, uh, they've managed to um, get in these sort of facilities, and it does function well in Sutton, uh, as I say, as the only community building. Uh, it has to be said they were already using the church for various uh, non-worship functions. Uh, this has made it much easier for them to uh, to use, and uh, in that sense, it's been uh, been a success. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the, heat, the problem of heating has yet to be uh, solved, and basically these oil-filled radiators are placed behind you when you sit at the table or wherever. Another uh, more recent um, uh, uh, move has been to add a, a porch, which is actually uh, uh, the toilet, uh, a kitchen, uh, kitchen or sink area, really. Um, and in this case, it it's a new boiler as well, hence this uh, rather large chimney. Um, but uh, uh, this, this has succeeded uh, with uh, planners, uh, local authority planners, who have felt happier to uh, accede to this than, uh, and then, than make a new addition to the, to the church. At Streatham, near Ely, um, the... Uh, this, the concept of the toilet and servery has, has gone further in that they've also created a warm meeting space. Uh, it's quite a big church. The village, I suppose, is about 2,000 strong. It's quite, quite, uh, quite large. Um, and they cleared the west end of the church, of the pews, um, and glazed in uh, the end of the south aisle. Um, and filled in the bottom of the tower with, uh, that's the servery, you can just see the shelf, there's the door when it, when it opens. This door opens and goes through to the toilet at the back. Uh, the bells are now rung from the gallery up here. Um, and there's a new door into that space from the, stair, the spiral stair, uh, which I think is a new door here. Uh, in other places, old doors that used to go to galleries that you know, were perhaps removed in the 19th century have been, re been reopened. Uh, and this is a nice sort of cosy, uh, cosy heated, heated room. I have to say that uh, since this project was completed, uh, there haven't been any new community uses in the church. Um, and essentially these, these uh, new facilities are for uh, fellowship after church on a Sunday uh, and the PCC meeting here, although there, uh, there are occasional other groups that use it, uh, they certainly haven't been able to attract two groups. That Elm near Wisbeach is one of our uh, great sort of marshland churches. Um, which, despite the fact it's huge, um, is a series of magnificent spaces. And it was very hard to see how, how uh, this, this would uh, work to create a, a, a warm meeting area uh, and, and the, uh, the uh, inevitable toilet. Um, the back end of the, the last two bays of the south aisle uh, were what remained of a, f well, it wasn't a family pew, because the family certainly didn't sit here, uh, but the f a family vault, which was under this raised uh, platform, of which, which had unequal steps. This, was, this is about 10 inches, and that's about 7 inches. It was a, a sort of a hazard waiting to happen. Um, and uh, this was the uh, this this space was 
as you, as you can see here, was not uh, very uh, useful to the parish uh, in, in terms of the, uh, uh, of the worship, uh, worship use. Uh, and it uh, being behind the main door, which is here, the south door, uh, decided to investigate what this, this, this mausoleum vault looked like to see if this area could be uh, partitioned off. So uh, a, uh, a hole was made and cameras put down and it was discovered that the, uh, the cof there were about half a dozen coffins down there but uh, the, uh, the vault itself uh, was a, a shallow brick vault that was a long way above the coffins and so uh, it was uh, agreed that the, the barrel vaulted uh, the segmental barrel, segmental brick vault would be removed and replaced by uh, flat beams which did not disturb any of the coffins uh, at all and a, a new unit uh, glazed area created at, at the back. This is looking west. This was, it's got a magnificent west town and clearly this space was not one to uh, be interfered with. So uh, this, this has just been completed. Um, whether it will bring the, this space was already cleared uh, uh, large space and the toilet is over here whether this will bring in any new uh, uh, uses I don't know uh, the fact that they, they sold their church hall uh, which had ceased to be used for about five years through dilapidation um, which fun helped fund this project which is a familiar scenario uh, means that the constant continuity of use had lost so the parish has now got to work up um, new uses and be interesting to see how they, how they get on um, at West Walton I'm sure you all know uh, the solution to creating a warm space uh, for worship particularly was to put an enormous theatre curtain um, behind the chancel arch so this is looking west. And when this is dropped, um, the, you know, the, the chancel then has a chance of getting heated. Um, and the small congregation there is there um, can feel a little more cosy, at least in the winter. Um, at the moment, there are there's proposals to do something at the west end of the church, which we will see how that develops. But uh, curtaining, I think, is in place in two or three churches, and it, uh, it's not cheap. Um, you might think, well, putting up curtains, that's cheap, but you know, these are quite, it's quite a serious bit of um, uh, engineering, but uh, it is effective. Other places have uh, uh, wanted to expand, and at least Orton Longville uh, uh, persevered and got through uh, this addition. This is the uh, North Isle to which they've added this meeting room with an access that comes through the North Door. Uh, and this is the North Chapel of the Marquises of Huntley who uh, owned the enormous uh, house that's next door to the church, just to the west here, now I hope. Um, we have to say, we're always rather, as a DAC, we vexed as to what we get out of this. Because when you look inside, it's basically a very small room. Um, there's that big window. That's the aisle. That's the, this, the board. So they've basically got a, a meeting room, which is used by, essentially, for PCC meetings. And the way the costs went, it's about sort of £15,000 per member. <laughs> However, they are very pleased with it. We would rather they had spent time sorting out the Huntley Chapel with all its clutter, um, which of course is uh, endemic to all parish churches, um, though perhaps this is quite extreme. Um, for Sally, you might like to know the helm is still up there, securely held onto this uh, monument. Because the concept of clutter and, <laughs> and uh, 
sort of creating, creating welcoming, warm, cosy spaces uh, really comes, comes home when you're dealing with children. And of course, the, sort of the, the great uh, uh, aim of all churches is to get the, get the young people in. Um, and for children, the minimum is uh, a, a thick carpet for them to sit on. Um, and uh, these miniature chairs and tables, which are always very interesting. Um, the comfy chairs, of course, are for the mothers. Um, uh, and the piano, well, there we are. There is one church in the which has three pianos in its children's corner. A particular that's coming to the fore in our diocese at least are uh, memorial chapels for World War II um, uh, aircraftmen, because of course uh, East Anglia is uh, littered with um, former aerodromes, and um, uh, there's a great deal of tourism in terms of both Americans bringing over their grandchildren and, um, and the like. Um, to see where they were in the war. Um, and uh, this is one of the uh, ch uh, Pathfinder chap, part of the Pathfinder, uh, what's it called? Pathfinder something like that. Um, and uh, of course, the, the DAC were happy to have uh, give permission for the memorial altar and the Book of Remembrance and a flag. But as you can see, stuff has turned up, like pictures and, and all these things. Uh, and, and a new window. Again, we, uh, we, uh, they gave a faculty for the window. Yes. Well. With, uh, I'm sort of just with a particular case which I think will um, uh, sort of bring all this sort of together. Little Paxton um, is a very small village which has now been um, um, Sort of absorbed by uh, uh, St. Neots. It's just north of St. Neots. Um, completely surrounded by uh, modern housing. You may have heard of it because of its uh, early 12th century tympanum with these sort of bizarre, crude sort of creatures on them. Or you may have heard of it because in the churchyard, uh, John Buonarroti Papworth, architect to the King of Württemberg, is buried. His sister happened to... Uh, he happened to die at his sister's, and uh, she lived in the parish. It's a, uh, a grand medieval west tower, uh, a nave with uh, a four-bay south aisle and a, and a small chancel. It uh, was essentially rebuilt in the 1840s, uh, one way or another. Uh, this arcade has been, uh, up, has been taken down at least once, not twice. Um, and this was the uh, situation. The, uh, the parish were keen to uh, uh, make the church more of a social uh, centre um, for the community, as, uh, it, as being an older uh, community, of course, uh, there weren't 106 agreements for a community hall and all that sort of thing. So there is this large housing estate um, with, uh, with no, uh, no communal facilities. And, uh, the parish priest here was very keen for the church to um, fulfill that, that role. Um, it was a very radical scheme, uh, clearing the whole thing out. Under the carpet was found ledgers and some, a rather nice power, but uh, unfortunately rather wrecked by the adhesives to the carpet in the past. We had thought that moving the uh, pew might be a chance for some archaeological investigation. Uh, to quite find out why that early 12th century tympanum was, was there. But unfortunately, time, we don't know, 50s, 60s, uh, the whole of the pew platforms have been filled up with concrete. Um, and uh, this, is now, this has been removed, but um, it, it was only, only need to be removed to a depth to allow the, some underfloor heating to go in, so uh, there was no, no requirement for any archaeology there. The uh, south porch uh, already had a sort of toilet attached to it. The lower area, lower part of the tower was enclosed to make the meeting, uh, warm, uh, warm, small meeting space. And the tower was renovated in the bells and a new ring floor created. And that's what the church looks like now. 
Um, uh, the pews are replaced by chairs. The carpet has been replaced by carpet tiles. And uh, pick them up and look at the uh, um, ledgers if you wish. It's all been fully recorded. Um, and uh, the, uh, the parish are very, very, very happy with it. It cost about 450,000 in all. Uh, grants from all sorts of people, uh, including they won 50,000 from um, some um, local local uh, talent sh talent uh, sort of competition. Um, they now have, and the parish now have all they think they need to promote their mission, furthering the kingdom of God, and their wish to bring people into their building for community events. Uh, I secretly hope they won't be too successful because uh, the building can't be expanded uh, without much without quite a bit of difficulty. Well, it wouldn't be wouldn't perhaps be impossible. Uh, but this is precisely what many congregations want their church uh, to look like and to function today, reversing the ecclesiologist and tractarian concepts of sort of sacred space and. Uh, the next one on the horizon is Gambling Gay, uh, where that's, that's a DAC meeting, in fact, um, where we are uh, contemplating how they're going to, what they're going to do with this one. The general public, of course, have yet to catch up with this, uh, these ideas, and it is usually the non-worshippers that object to the removal of the pews. And we've been told by some churches that they've lost weddings because the bride now walks up a carpeted aisle flanked by stackable chairs and not the pews she was expecting. Are we actually losing anything of real value? Well, in terms of the fabric, I hope uh, the answer there is quite firmly no, uh, because of the uh, care the DAC take in uh, making sure these uh, alterations are not damaging. And Nearly all of the fabric changes can be reversed. Uh, Great St. Mary's is about to remove some of the concrete floors that were introduced at about 1970. Archaeologically in Ely, we are very lucky to have a very active consultant who carries out watching briefs himself in his own time, but uh, he writes briefs and commissions others to carry out some more intensive recording work. Just recently we, dis we found a, a, a small doorway at the west end of the uh, South Isle of Horningsea Church, which seems to have led to an anchorite cell or something. It's quite, quite interesting. Uh, parishes, of course, object to the expense of archaeology, but in our recent experience, at least, they have stuck to the rules. Uh, but we do rely very much on that one consultant, and if he's available, I'm not quite sure where we would be. Of course, once the fittings, like pews and Victorian pulpits, have been removed, they won't come back. And we always request at least a photographic record, if not the retention of um, examples. Much of this new technology that's coming in, the sound systems, the heating and that sort of thing, has um, a life of less than 15 years, I suspect. Uh, and I'm sure how, uh, we know how long veneered MDF will last. Uh, the character of the interiors, of course, is clearly being altered, but surely this is reflecting current taste and worship preferences, as internal changes always have. Of course, that indefinable quality that uh, Crispin uh, described earlier on, um, whether we call it the patina of age or a numinous character, it, that is likely to be lost um, in the wealth of uh, uh, which can make churches indistinguishable from a doctor's surgery or even uh, some sort of domestic interior. But of course, that, that is what people are, are wanting to have. I suggest that something like Little Paxson will become readily identified by future ecclesiologists and architectural historians as typical work of the early decades of the 21st century. Whether this will then be considered a good or a bad period remains to be seen. Thank you.